Today we've got a 2015 Ram 1500 and we're gonna do the rear brakes, including the parking brake shoes. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is rip off the wheel. Looks like it is 22 millimeter. Back on the caliper, there's a 10 millimeter here that you're gonna wanna pull out. And then on the bottom, there's another 10 millimeter that you're gonna wanna pull out. And then you'll be able to remove the caliper from the caliper bracket. Oh great, I guess I found a problem. Right up here, you're gonna see there's a lot of brake pad. And if you go down, there's not a lot of brake pad. So that tells me that the either the brake pad is stuck which makes sense because look at this, the slider for the brake pad is actually damaged and it's preventing the brake pad from pushing inward. Uh, if this wasn't the case, you could also look up here on the caliper and make sure that these sliders actually slide. Because if they don't, you're gonna have uneven brake pad wear like this one does. All right, let's continue. On the back side of the caliper, there's actually a caliper bracket with two bolts in it. There are 21 millimeters. There's one down here, and there's one up here. These things are in there super tight, so you're gonna need to use all your muscles to get them out. So now we can pull these two bolts out and take the caliper bracket off. And let's take a look at the brake pad. Nice. It's like probably only like 25% worn on the top and 100% on the bottom. There's no pad left on the bottom, just the backing plate. And that's because the bracket on the top for the slider is probably not installed properly when the last person did a brake job. So that stinks. You can see the outside pad actually looks nice and even though. So the outside one is working great. Now comes the difficult part. We gotta get this rotor off of this axle. And if you live anywhere where there's rust, this rotor is gonna be stuck on there real good. You can see I could probably hang off this thing and not have it move an inch. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna back off the parking brake that is inside this, and then hopefully we'll be able to tap off the rotor. But we don't know yet. Let's try it out. On the back side of the rotor, there is actually a little hole with a rubber cover in it, which you can remove. Now on the driver's side, it is on the top of the axle, and on the passenger side, it is on the bottom of the axle. But either way, behind that, there's a little star that you can turn, it's like a little gear, and you turn the gear and it loosens up the parking brake that is inside this rotor. I don't know if you can actually see it. Oh yeah, you can. So here's what you wanna do. You wanna take a flat screwdriver and put it into this hole, and you wanna have it facing downward like this. And then you stick it in the star and you go like this with it. and you can kind of see how it's rotating. And this is what you want to do until it is nice and loose. And I'm actually going to go right to the end, probably, just to make sure it is as loose as it'll get. And then the rotor should be a little easier to get off. So now we need to take off the rotor. But before we can pull the rotor off, we got to take these little clips off of the lugs. Because if you don't take these clips off, the rotor's not gonna come off. These things are put on here by the factory and basically they hold the rotor in place while it's going down the assembly line and, and calipers and stuff are putting on. So we're gonna take this off. You can, you can just take this off and throw it right in the trash or you can put it right back on if you're, if you're really uh, into these things. So now it's time to take the rotor off. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can hit in between here with a hammer, but you have to be real careful not to hit the lugs because if you hit those and you screw up all the threads, then you're gonna be pretty sad. The other option is you pry it from the backside, or if you're really sure you're not gonna use this rotor again, you could hit it on the backside of the rotor up here, but we're gonna try and avoid that because it's just messy. So I'm gonna try tapping this with a hammer and we'll see if it pops off. 
So clearly that didn't work. We're gonna go to plan B, which is pry it from the backside with a long pry bar. So let me show you how to do that. So I've got this giant pry bar that's just a long steel bar that you can use for all sorts of things like yard work or dipping it in concrete like I did at some point, or you can pry things off of cars that are stuck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the pry bar right in between down here and up here and the rotor and try and pop this rotor off. And then we can see just how disgusting the back of this rotor is. All right, that worked. Awesome. You can see all the rust that came off as I was whacking it with a hammer and got all gooey. Let's do a little detective work on this brake system, shall we? You can see the thickness of the rotor is far different from the front side to the back side. And that is because the back side was completely worn down. You can see there's an, an edge here. And that is all because of this. This little clip here, so this is a stainless steel caliper um, or brake pad slider. And since this slider was not in the right place, the pad could not go inward and therefore the caliper could only push the bottom half of the pad. And when it did that, it wore away the whole bottom of the pad until there was no pad left. Let me take the pad out and I'll show you. So check this out. The pad is good on the top and worn out like razor thin on the bottom because it actually, actually wore through the pad and then through a lot of the actual backing plate of the pad. And that is what happens when you install brakes wrong. So you can see this is how the pad was sitting on the rotor. Pretty incredible, right? All right, let's continue. So it's now time to remove the parking brake shoes from this axle, and it is not a fun job at all. The other side, I actually replaced the parking brake shoes because, oh, well, you can see. The shoe friction material actually came off of the shoe backing plate. Let's see if the front one's as bad. Yep. So you can see these brake shoes are not the highest quality and they both need to be replaced. So the way that I did this on the other side was probably far from perfect, but I'll tell you what I did. Down in here, there are some clips to remove. And once I remove them, I'll show you what they look like so you can get a better idea. But I started off by removing those clips, and that gives you a little more flexibility into moving the shoes around, and then you can kind of wiggle the springs out. So let me get these clips off, and I'll show you what's next. So those clips are now out of the way, and those are what hold the actual shoe to the backing plate. Now, the only thing that's left on here holding these brake shoes on is the spring. Two springs on the top and one spring on the bottom. The one on the bottom is the easiest one to get on the passenger side. As I mentioned earlier, this whole brake system is flipped the opposite way on the driver's side. So the top spring on the driver's side will be easier to get, and the bottom spring on the passenger side will be easier to get. So let's pull that one off next. Down on the bottom is the adjuster. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this adjuster out because once you pull the adjuster out, the spring will be a little bit easier to remove. 
So let's pop the adjuster out and it should come out fairly easily. Oh look, the spring came out too. Just trying to wiggle the self adjuster out. There it is. So this is the self adjuster, and this is the thing that you loosened earlier to get the brake rotor off. And the way it works is as you turn this thing, you'll see it actually shrinks in size and it brings the brake shoes together. And if you were to go the opposite way, it would obviously separate the shoes and it would make them tighter in the rotor. Pretty clever, right? Now, while I was doing that, I actually unintentionally popped the spring off, which you can see right here. So now, let's work on the top. If you can get the shoe out of its happy little home, right here, then the spring becomes a heck of a lot easier to pull off. As you'll see. Now there's still one more spring on the back side. get it off. Now let's do the other side. Okay, there's the front. Now back here, you can see we got two springs and they appear to be the same. And one goes on the front and one goes on the back. And they go just like that. So now I'm going to spray this down and clean it up a little bit. So now I just got to put it all back together. I'm going to start by putting a little a little of the juice on here. And this will just allow it to move a little nice and freely in here. It's just anti-seize, by the way. It's something I do. I don't know if other people do it or not, but hey, you do what you want. It's your truck. I'm gonna pre-install the springs on this side. Gotta get them down in there, though. Okay, well, that was not easy. Now let's do the bottom. Oops. All right, so now the adjuster's in place. Now we just gotta do the spring. Well, that was way easier. So the way that I did this on the other side actually worked out pretty well. Let me show you what it is. So on the driver's side, I was able to use long needle nose pliers and grab the clip and squeeze it like so. And I was able to just basically slide it on. That worked great. Ta-da! It's on there. Let me just gonna straighten this out a little bit. All right.
Well, let's do the other side. Ta-da! It's in there. All right. Let's throw the rotor back on. Mint. Now we gotta do the caliper bracket. Guess what? I think I found the root of all of this problem that we had with these brakes. So you know how this thing was bent? Well, I believe that this clip is not the right one for this caliper bracket. So basically, when you buy a box of brake pads for this truck, it comes with new um, slider clips. And they are different from the left side to the right side. And let me show you, let me show you exactly why that is. So obviously these are the old ones, these are the new ones. And these two are the same, but these two are not. You can see where the notches are on these clips. This one is simply wrong. It's, it's for the wrong side of the truck. So somebody put the wrong clip on the truck, and that is what uh, made the brake pads wear out funny. And you can see, you can tell there's a little notch in the caliper bracket right down here which you can see where my finger is. And that is where the clip goes into. And then there's one on this, the top side as well. So we're gonna clip those in and I'll show you that they line up properly with the new clips. Now you can see the indent on each side of the caliper bracket. And you have to make sure that the clips go into those indents or else you're gonna have the same problem that this truck did. So let's pop them. Now see that they line up perfectly with the little slots on the caliper bracket. So now we know that they're in properly, and now we're ready to put the brake pads in there. So now we need to compress the piston that is in this caliper. So I'm gonna throw a pad, an old pad in there, and we're gonna put a big C-clamp on it, and we are going to compress that piston. You can do this with channel lock pliers as well if you have a big enough pair. Um, I just happen to have a clamp handy. All right, so now we'll, uh, I'll clamp it down. All right, I think we're bottomed out. So now make sure your caliper sliders are sliding and make sure there's no rips in the boots because if there's a rip in the boot, then water's gonna get in there and it's gonna rust up and it's gonna make your caliper stuck. And then you're gonna wear out the brake pads in a weird way. So let's throw this uh, caliper bracket back on and then we'll get the caliper on. Caliper bracket is now on, and one of the things to look out for is make sure the brake pads are sitting in these uh, brackets properly. You might have to pull out a little bit to get them to slide in, but you want to make sure that the pad is touching the rotor all the way up and all the way down. And you also want to make sure that they wiggle and slide nice and easy. I put a little anti-seize on the bottom of my brake pads. I've done that for a million years. Uh, some people don't do it. It's totally user discretion, I guess. So now we're ready to put the caliper on. So the last thing on my to-do list before I put the wheel back on is to tighten up the, uh, the parking brake shoes. So I'm gonna do that by sticking the screwdriver back in the hole on the backing plate, and I'm gonna adjust that star so that the shoes are touching the inside of this rotor, which I'll be able to feel. All right, so the wheel's back on, and now we gotta go pump the brake pedal to build up the pressure in the system again, because if you were to hop in the truck right now and just take off, you wouldn't have any brakes. 
So you gotta go pump that pedal. All right, let's go pump it and call it quits.